Welcome to the Scoop School podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He's smooth as soft serve ice cream, hard as peanut brittle, and cutting edge as black sesame ice cream. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, thanks for tuning in. Whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching or listening on iTunes, it's really nice to have you here. I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is the Ice Cream Club. If you haven't been to the Ice Cream Club's website, you really need to go and check it out. They're a great company based out of Florida that basically make ice cream that you can simply just buy and sell. You can sell it under the Ice Cream Club brand. It's a very strong brand throughout the ice cream community. Or you can sell it as your own brand. They don't care. All they want to do is make great quality ice cream and get it out to the people. Now, so if you've got a business, a restaurant, a cafe, a coffee shop, a pizza shop, there's very little expense in basically getting in four to six tubs and selling ice cream without the process of having to make it. So if you're not culinarily driven and you just want to sell some great ice cream, hey, theicecreamclub.com. Talk to Rich Draper and all the crew down there. Great family-owned business. We appreciate their episode sponsorship. Now, we've been talking about menu boards these last couple of videos, and I want to talk about a principle that I think is pretty important when it comes to your customers' ease of ordering, and that's what I call sectionizing. I don't know whether that's an actual word or not, because when you type it in on the Word document, it always comes up with that crazy red underline to say, hey, this isn't a word, you've got to change things. Well, sectionizing is a word that I have coined, and this is video evidence that when it becomes a huge term in the food industry, you've, you can say you heard it here first. So sectionizing by principle is just basically sectioning your menu items on your menu board in categorizing or categories. You can call it categorizing if you want, but I think sectionizing sounds a bit more sexier. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a group of products, whether they be your core products or other type of products and putting them on one menu board. So you'll see behind us here, we've got one uh, for our traditional treats. So that's our menu items that basically um, found in every ice cream shop around the country. You've got your cones, you've got your traditional sundaes, so far as your hot fudge, hot caramel, and we also have our waffle cones there. You need to have those waffle cones up on the menu board. Those images drive sales. We've had another video about upselling here on the, uh, on the YouTube and the podcast. Upselling is huge. Waffle cones are the biggest upselling item that you'll have. So traditional treats are one, the first one of our menu boards. And that's where we always start our customers. Everyone reads left to right on the menu. So as a customer standing there, they start with our traditional treats. Gives them nicer comfort level. Like, oh yeah, we've got this, we've got this. The next panel, we've got our custom Sundays or our custom products. Now, I think it's important that you communicate to your customers that, hey, you can order off the menu, but you really will make anything that you want within reason. Uh, so having one of those boards on your uh, menu basically says, look, come in. If you want the craziest ice cream combination that uh, has ever been made, we'll make it for you. The only downside of that menu board or that section, if you will, is that there's a lot of writing. You really need to be able to display what core products you have so far as flavors and what toppings you can put in or what add-ins you can put in. And that kind of can account for a lot of different products. So the upside is you're communicating to your employees uh, or your employees are communicating to your customers that you can make anything you want. The downside is there's a lot of writing on that board. Third panel we have up here is our featured Sundays. I think it's really important to be able to have some recommendations or as we mentioned in the previous video, some traditional spin favorites that you're suggesting to your customers. You know, nothing outlandish, but those kind of traditional products that maybe you put a bit of a spin on. So we have things like the Hawaiian Sunday, the Triberry Sunday, a Belgian waffle Sunday. You know, some things that are a little bit unique, but they're the core products of our, uh, uh, our Sunday menu panel. And again, people can order off the second panel and order whatever they want, but it's good to have something that you've formatted so people can just point and say, that's what I want. That Triberry Sunday looks great, that's what I want. Our fourth panel here was our concretes panel. Now again, our store in St. Louis sold all different types of ice cream, but it was a frozen custard store before we took it over. So concretes were huge. Now concretes, for those of you who don't know, are basically a blended product. It's similar to a, 
uh, a Dairy Queen's Blizzard or a McDonald's McFlurry. It's basically taking your ice cream and blending different nuts, uh, particulates, candies, cookies into it. And they were a huge seller for us. So concretes were on that menu panel as well as our banana splits. And the last one we had was our drinks menu. So again, any type of frozen beverage, hot beverage, and our take home packs were also on those menu boards. So the beauty of having every single menu board their own category or their own section is that when a customer comes in, and you'll know that there are customers that come in, they put their hand in their pockets and they go, don't really know what I want today. Now there's like 10 people behind them, so you need to get these people through pretty fast. Speed of service is the key. So having menu boards with bits and pieces all over the place is basically chaos. You want your customers to be able to go, mm, I don't think anything traditional. Um, I don't want anything to drink. I want something to kind of eat. Um, concretes look pretty good. I don't want to have to build a sundae, but maybe can I just have some vanilla with Oreos in it? And the thing is that either the customer or your employee can guide the customer through that purchasing process so that you can basically eliminate that panel, eliminate this panel, this panel, and lo and behold, you're only left with one. That's happened a lot quicker with a sectionized or a categorized menu board than it would be if stuff was all over the place. So again, have a look at the menu board, have a look at where you've got your different categories and products that kind of group together and try and put them together on the menu boards to help your customers order more efficiently. I think you, your, your customers will thank you, I think your employees will thank you, and your bank balance will thank you because basically you'll be able to put more people through because of ease of ordering. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate you tuning in to this episode of the podcast. Again, thank you very much to the Ice Cream Club, Rich Draper and the fellas. Appreciate your support. Keep on scooping. We'll see you in the next one.